Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. A few people have asked me about my Iron Man suit recently because I've started some other projects, including my 3D printed Geiger inspired Xenomorph Alien style suit, and my Hulkbuster and Johnny Five. So a few people have asked me what's happened to Iron Man, uh, you know, have I finished it or what's going on? I haven't finished it, there's still electronics hanging out of it. Um, we still haven't finished all of the pieces, um, but I've briefly got distracted by some other projects. So today we're going to come back to Iron Man and try and do some of the fill-in sections between the rigid joints. So um, we're going to have a go at the knee joint. So basically the piece that goes between the lower leg and the upper leg. And there's multiple ways you can make those. Uh, you can make them out of foam or you can make them out of urethane or latex rubber. But actually what we're going to do is try and 3D print them in a material called NinjaFlex, which is a very good 3D printable, very tough rubber. So here's a small sample of NinjaFlex which I printed. There's also some more videos on this in my channel if you go back and look at the Alien Part 1. Um, this is extremely tough. This is um, a, a 3D printed rubber band essentially. It's incredibly tough. So that's going to be excellent for making... Um, rubber sections of the suit um, and the print bed on my Lulzbot Taz is um, almost a foot by foot so about 30, it's about 28 centimeters by 28 centimeters so you can print some fairly large pieces so let's have a look at some CAD so here's my CAD drawing for the part um, it's a fairly simple looking thing um, we've got some features on the back there I looked at some reference pictures from some of the sideshow action figures that you can get um, Basically, it tapers at the bottom, and it's quite large at the top, so my kneecap can fit in. Um, it probably needs a scoop cutting out of the back here. I've made this piece super high at the top, um, so right at the back of the top, we probably need a scoop cut out so that my knee can bend backwards um, just there. And the reason I haven't cut that out in the CAD model is because this is going to be printed upside down, so it's printed with a bigger base and a smaller top. So it's going to be printed in NinjaFlex rubber, as I mentioned. Um, that's quite bendy so as the print goes up it gets bendier and bendier as it gets taller so um, and that makes it quite hard to lay the lay the new layers on the top with a 3d printer so it's, mu it's much better to have a big square stable base and a smaller top so um, I'm not going to cut that scoop in here we'll do that afterwards in real life if we need to when we've printed the physical item so um, you'll notice this is a solid block as well um, and the reason for that is that I want to get the wall as uniform as possible all the way up. So the way I'm going to do that, if we move over to Slicer, where we prepare the prints for 3D printing. Now there's a video in my channel about the entire process, but basically we take the 3D model, we put it into Slicer, set some options for printing, and that generates the G-code that goes into the printer and tells it what to do, basically. So in my, if we look um, in layers and perimeters, I've got this horizontal shells section is set for zero and zero. So that basically means um, there's no top and bottom. So it's going to print um, without a, normally you'd print a solid object, you put solid layers on the top and bottom, but we don't want those. And similarly in infill, I've set that fill density to zero, which means it won't put anything inside. So you can either set that between uh, zero and 100% infill in various patterns, so uh, normally I do 20% honeycomb or something like that for a solid item. But in this case we want it hollow so it's got no top and bottom and no infill. Um, and what we've actually done then is we've selected that we want to have eight perimeters vertically. So the printer should go around the outside eight times and leave the middle completely hollow so it's going to print a hollow tube. So let's print that and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've set that off printing. Um, we've got Pronterface running on a little netbook over here. Pronterface is reporting the print is going to take nine hours. Um, I believe it, but based on what it's done so far. So um, this printer's quite, got quite a useful feature. Um, and in fact, uh, most printers running the same firmware, the open source Marlin firmware, have a similar feature, which is this knob that you can turn. Um, if you've got an LCD installed that is and you can see there's a little percentage here that currently says 124 if I turn this knob up and you can hear the printer speed increase there so you can actually um, make it go faster or slower so I've actually set this to print um, in NinjaFlex at 60 millimeters a second but when it started printing 
I thought that was a bit slow, so I've just turned the speed up there to about 125%. So we should be able to cut our nine hours down to um, hopefully about six and a half to seven. This is actually the second one. I already know that the uh, first one has printed fine at that speed, so we're going to leave that printing at 125%. Um, and then we'll have both of them. So both my parts have printed now. Here they are, and obviously they're nice and shiny. We've got quite a good finish. There's a couple of minor blips on them where there have been overhangs and things. Um, if I printed more slowly, it would have been okay. This one, there's a band of weirdness here where um, obviously it's printed this way up, and as the part started to wobble as it's printed, it's done something weird, and I slowed the print back down to 100%. Um, and then it continued okay. That's actually going to be hidden anyway. The other one was absolutely fine though. That printed all the way through without any issues. Um, so obviously these are really flexible, which is great. Um, and they fit quite well. So obviously this one's going to go in there. And we need to paint these, but I'll come on to that in a moment. So what I've actually done, um, you'll notice I left these things in here, which those were going to couple to the original knee hinges. So one of those is higher on one side, which is why this one is higher. Um, but that seems to fit in quite well. Um, the idea was to stop it dropping down. But if we actually look at the knee piece <coughs> in the shin there, and basically we can see it's fine. And the reason for it being fine is that inside, whoops, um, we've got that piece there, which is actually part of the, the uh, internal mechanism that holds the shells together and clamps your leg. And this fits neatly on there, and it doesn't fall down. So basically, once it's on my leg, I think it's going to be fine just to have it um, free, freely standing there. So the idea was I was going to put a plastic insert in with a magnet, which attaches to the bearing that I put on the knee hinges on each side. But I think I don't need them. So let's put those on my knees and see what they look like. So I think that's going to be fine. Um, I just need to cut a scoop out of the back so I can bend my leg backwards. Um, but they're only just onto my kneecaps there, which I think is about the right height. So once I've cut the back out, that should be fine to bend my legs. So I've cut that piece out with a sharp knife. So you've got that scoop in the back and my, my knee can bend. So that looks okay. So um, now let's talk about painting. So. These are supposed to be silver, um, but obviously they're rubber, so if we put um, a normal car paint on uh, with plastic primer or whatever, then the paint's going to crack when they bend. So what we really need to do is um, paint it with something either flexible or we need to put on a very fine coat of something, very silver, so we don't have to coat it solidly. We can kind of give it a mist coat and give it just a bit of a silver tint, um, which is going to be my plan. So I'm going to be painting it with these things. I have. Um, this is Adhesion Promoter, which I've tested on another piece of Ninja Flex, and it sticks incredibly well. It's a bit like a primer for enamel paints. And I've also got uh, enamel chrome spray paint to go on the top, which I've tested as well. And um, it sticks pretty well. You can rub it off if you really rub it, but the piece can flex and the paint doesn't crack. So that's just using a light coat of that. So let's get those painted up and see what they look like. So I've painted up the knee pieces with the paints I showed you, and um, it's looking pretty good, really, and obviously they're still really flexible and the paint doesn't crack. So let's put those on and see what it looks like. Right, so I've put one boot on. I'll have a look back through my channel to find out about the articulation and the strapping system that's in the si inside it. Obviously I've got one knee seal on there and I can bend my knee perfectly well. Um, so we're just going to put the thigh on and see uh, see how that works. Haven't really got the right type of trousers on for this. Let's just try and tuck those in. I think that looks like it's going to be all right. And that 
holds the two halves together. So, yeah, feels all right on the whole. Um, kind of has the effect anyway, at least you can't see my jeans. And um, doesn't really restrict my movement, so I think that's going to be fine. So obviously I have many more fill-in sections for the suit to do, including the neck seal, which I'll probably attempt to do next. And I still need to do something about mounting the switches that control the electronics. So there's definitely going to be more videos about this suit, so check out my channel for more, add me on Twitter, Facebook and my other social media pages listed in the description of this video. You can check out my other videos as well in the channel, I'm doing some other projects as you probably know, including my 3D printed alien xenomorph suit. So far I've done this hand made of flexible and rigid 3D printed parts. That's all for now.